in the gate at the Kentucky Derby. Even a very laid-back UNL Chancellor is exhibiting unusual confidence. Uh, I'm wearing a button here that is especially made up for me in Lincoln that has already declared us the national champs, so uh, you got to help us make that true. Yeah! The New Year's Eve Bowl Parade also inspired confidence in Husker fans. The Husker marching band carried the fighting spirit the two and a half miles of the parade route. And one float, reminiscent of the weather back home, is a symbol to the governor. Well, I think it's time to be very bearish on the hurricanes. This is our year to do it all. On game day, we follow a man who knows well what game day is like. Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Rogers played in the Orange Bowl the last time we clinched the national title. Hey, Dante, what is y'all predicting for the game? Are y'all ready? Man, it's all good. It's yeah. all good. It's all good. They say we're taking our unfinished business. That's right. That's our motto this we're season. Hey, we're about to handle our business and get back to Lincoln with a nice trophy. With a nice trophy. Well, go, guys. Father Jim Gone has the faith of Job. When he was a young priest in Duncan, Nebraska, Corey Schlesinger was his altar boy. There's going to be about 75 gallons of holy water in the Nebraska section. We're passing out little vials of it so that when it hits the Miami team and they begin to sizzle, they'll understand that more than just Big Red has come here. And just before kickoff, everywhere you turn, Husker fans rally the troops outside the stadium. No lack of enthusiasm here. Nothing left to do now but lay back and leave our hopes and dreams in the hands of Coach Tom and the team to take care of that unfinished business. And I can't tell you how many times, I know you heard it too, fans outside the stadium saying, let's just get it on. Yeah, it was a long week down there, and the players were really ready to get it on. Well, that's what we have coming up next, the kickoff. We'll take you back through the 60 minutes that crowned our national champions. Welcome to the garden, the garden cafe, great food. Every day. Garden, garden, garden cafe. We love food. There's nothing like showing off a brand new dining room set. And at Rod Cush's Furniture, we have the perfect dining set for you. Look at this oak five-piece dinette set with four oak kitchen Windsor chairs for only $2.99. Need more chairs? How about this five-piece set with four oak press-back chairs? Plus, we'll throw in two more matching chairs free, making a seven-piece set for only $4.99. That's right, a seven-piece oak dinette set for only $4.99. No wonder more and more people are shopping at Rod Cush's Furniture, 72nd and L, and in Lincoln at 27th and Superior. When talking about national news isn't enough, News Watch 7's Rob McCartney went to Washington, D.C. to show you how it's affecting your life. He took you to the first day of the new Congress and explained what the contract with America means to you. When you need national news brought to the heartland, News Watch 7 is the one to count on. Watch KETV's news every night, and you'll always find a wealth of information. Watch it Wednesday and Saturday nights, and you just might find well. You guys are the greatest. We've been waiting for 23 years for this. Now we're right back where we belong, on top. That was Husker offensive lineman Terry Keneally at yesterday's rally at Lincoln. I'd say he's a little pumped. Yeah, just a little bit. He played like it, too. One of the last guys to get a piece of uh, Miami quarterback Frank Costa during the game. But there were plenty of tense moments before the Big Red had the national championship sewn up. One thing was for sure going in, Nebraska brought the best fans in the country to Miami. Sure, it was Miami, and this was, after all, a home game for the third-ranked Hurricanes, but it did not take long to see and hear that this was not your basic bowl game. A shot at a national championship for Nebraska and a record turnout by Big Red fans. 
This is supposed to be a party for both teams, but if you take a look out here, we've got nothing but Husker fans. Take a look. The Husker backing moved right into the Orange Bowl, and the battle of fan support was a toss-up. The first quarter was not, however. Tommy Frazier winning the battle of quarterbacks in practice, so he got the start over Brooke Berenger. Frazier trying to get something going against the top-ranked defense in the country, and it just wasn't happening. Three and out in their first possession. Three and INT the next go-around, as Lombardi winner Warren Sapp puts on the pressure. Carlos Jones skies for the game's first turnover. It would take a while for the Husker D to solve the hurricane offensive attack. It would happen, but not before plenty of big red ulcers had boiled over. Following the interception, quarterback Frank Costa would lead his Canes on their longest scoring drive of the season, a big chunk on this 43-yard toss and catch with A.C. Tellison. The Canes would later lose their go-to man, Tellison out with a separated shoulder. But this drive was still on. The quick hitter to Trent Jones, who zips by everybody. 35 yards and the game's first touchdown. And with a 10-zip lead, the Canes were looking very much in control of this ball game. The interception hurt us, but it did not kill us. We're going to come back and we're going to win. They're going to pick it up, and the second quarter is going gonna, gonna to rock and roll. With the second quarter came the 95 Orange Bowl debut of Brooke Berenger. But it didn't take long for Warren Sapp to make him feel right at home, driving the welcome wagon and driving Brooke into the turf. So with the big red offense sputtering, it was time for the black shirts to again come to the rescue. The Hurricanes came out tough early in both halves, and then you guys seemed to adjust or seemed to step it up. Yeah, well, we had a, we had a couple of lapses there on those big plays, and that's the thing that scared us all along. You know, they're a big play football team. Well, they did step it up, holding the Canes to just seven more points the rest of the way, equaling Miami's lowest offensive output of the season. After stopping the Canes for the first time in the game, Berenger got another chance to put the Husker machine in motion. Ozzie digging into that bag of tricks. It's Riley Washington on the reverse. He'll scoot all the way to the 20. Setting up the Big Reds' first score. Berenger rolling right. Tight end Mark Gilman gets behind everybody. And surprise, surprise, the nation's top rushing team breaks the ice through the air. A three-point ball game heading back to the locker room. So far, they need to tighten up their um, defense and get a little more tackles. I'm just scared to death, I'm, but I love these Cornhuskers. They're going to do it. They're going to pull it out. She was right, too, wasn't she? <laughs> she was convinced they would. <laughs> yeah. Our special Husker celebration continues in just a minute with the second half. And what a half it was. We'll look back at the Husker domination when we come back. How sweet it is. It's truly been a great year. It's taken all of us to win the national championship, you fans included. And now that we're adding a new trophy to this case, why don't you add a few new trophies of your own in Husker Heaven? You'll find a huge selection of Nebraska championship sweatshirts, t-shirts, hats, jackets, and pennants. All the clearing that the Corn Huskers are national champions. Everything is officially licensed by the university. Husker Heaven, just six blocks north of Nains and Maple in Omaha. Thanks, and let's do it again. Alcohol use is the top cause of death among teens today. Don't provide minors with alcohol. Call the Nebraska Drug-Free Hotline for a booklet on what you can do about drug abuse. Drugs are a dead end. Ah, confessions. Okay, 6'7", I weigh 300 pounds. That's about one and a half Mel Gibsons, by the way. Sometimes I cry in movies. I love people. I love gossip. And I love talk shows. I love the little things in people's lives. Do I rock the boat? Absolutely. It makes things far more interesting. We're doing a talk show. It's a great way to find out what makes people tick. Which is why I'm hosting one. A talk show, that is. Gordon Elliott. Weekdays at 10 on KETV Channel 7. Sure, I scored two touchdowns, but all I did was run the ball. It was the offensive lineman, the receivers blocking downfield that did everything. All I had to do is run into the end zone. Too easy. Way too easy. Corey Schlesinger giving credit for his two touchdowns to the whole team. And that whole team, both sides of the ball, sure came to play that second half. 
And that's been the tune all season long. The Huskers were ready and in condition to play after three quarters. And with a special pair of fresh legs, there was no stop in the Huskers' quest for the national championship. We're going to break the quarterback's leg, and we're going to come out and score 30 points on him. We're going to beat him. We're bringing the trophy home. Plan on it. It didn't take long for the Canes to quell that Husker optimism as the second half kicked off, taking Costa and company just a minute 44 to get their lead back to 10. The big blow through the air. Costa finds the slanting Jonathan Harris, and watch this guy slip through everybody. Before it was over, he'd raced 44 yards, and that big red national championship hanging by a thread. Luckily, though, it was the same thread that has held this patchwork team together through injury and adversity all season long, the Big Red defense. Thanks to several Miami penalties, the Canes found themselves on their own four-yard line, and Frank Costa found Dwayne Harris in his own backfield. Harris rumbling through to give Costa a taste of the Orange Bowl turf and pick up a couple of points in the meantime. The Huskers missed out on several points as well as the fourth quarter got underway. Kane punter place kicker Dane Pruitt proving he can also play a little soccer, preventing a sure Husker touchdown after the snap sailed over his head. After the penalty, the Big Red starting their attack at the four-yard line. The nation's top rushing offense, perhaps the best college line ever, four plays to gain four yards, and thankfully, this call did not cost the Huskers a national crown. Ozzie put it in the air, Brooke Berenger put it right into the hands of hurricane safety Earl Little. Big mistake. But that would be all for big red mistakes. Near perfection the rest of the game. And as the Hurricanes were gasping for breath, Tommy Frazier was breathing new life into the Husker offense. Lawrence Phillips breaking free for 25 yards, all the way to the 15. And on the very next play, Corey Schlesinger slicing through the sapped Miami defense, pulling Nebraska within just two. National championship on the line, needing a two-point conversion. Same end zone as 1984, but a much different result. As Frazier rifles one to Eric Alford, a tie ball game with 7.38 remaining. They say you need a few breaks to win a national championship, and this was one of the biggest. Miami driving, but Costa overthrows a sure six points. Ty Johnson had managed to get behind the black shirts and was wide open. That set the stage for the game's final score. Third and four in the fresh legs of Tommy Frazier, blood flowing smoothly through every artery, would carry him 25 yards. He would convert another third down option before giving off one final time to fullback Corey Schlesinger. And as the clock struck midnight in Miami, the Huskers' championship finally ringing true. All others are forgotten. All else is forgiven. After 22 years of trying, Coach Tom Osborne finally wins a national championship. We all came together. No one deserves this more than we do, and I'm just proud to be part of it. I I've never felt like this before. It's the best feeling in the world. The feeling is, is it's beyond explanation. It's just it's not too many people get to feel this, you know, and it, I'm just overwhelmed. We're number one on the nation. That's all. How does it feel? Unbelievable. That's the way a lot of us felt as we watched it. And I get cold chills watching it again. And we were on the sidelines. and know a lot of folks saw it uh, on television. But the excitement and the emotion there was simply unbelievable. When they scored that two-point conversion and all those flashbacks to 1984, mm -hmm. people were pumped. I mean, yeah. I think I, adrenaline could have, <laughs> you know, you could have bottled it yeah. at that game. You've been around a long time, and I see a tear in that eye. Yeah, I, <laughs> It was a big one. It was a big one. It, it was a vindication. And you talk about a party getting underway? Oh, yeah. The party <laughs> did not end at the end of the game. That's right, and it was not just a Miami celebration either. When we come back, Big Red, big red Backers celebrate. Oh, did we celebrate? I was. He's been outside. Number one. A little bit. <laughs> what are you doing? Aren't you freezing, man? Does your garage look like this? Then it's time you pay to visit the Heartland Storage Sheds and buy a shed now. They can build a quality storage shed right on your lot for just a bit more than those do-it-yourself kits. With prices as low as $4.99, you get strong 2x4 construction and a 25-year siding warranty.
With over 17 years experience and 400,000 satisfied customers, Heartland has a shed fit for you. Visit our main sales lot in Ralston at 72nd and Main. Wheel of Fortune, weeknights at 6.30 only on Channel 7. I used to sell all the time. I started dealing when I was 11, mostly just bud. Nothing like crack or anything because it was too hard to get a hold of. When I started to get in trouble with the cops, my mom sent me to the boys club. They had special classes like smart moves, which helped me realize the dangers of drugs. I gave everything I had left to my mom. And she got rid of it. I haven't done anything else since. And it's time to party. Woo! We did it! We're number one! At the team's hotel at Bell Harbor, Florida, celebration was the rule. Quarterback Baron Miles' family had both a bowl win and Baron's birthday to celebrate. Happy birthday, dear Baron! Happy birthday to you! Priscilla Frazier had her son's health and his MVP trophy to be thankful for. Well, uh, we had talked earlier, and um, he said he was well. When I saw him go down the first time and got up, he jumped up, yeah, and I said, he's okay. And um, when he went in that fourth game and pulled it through, and I know he was back. He's I, back. He's back. <laughs> he's back. If you could work your way into the hotel lobby, you'd see exuberant fans of every makeup type, every hairstyle, even tuckered out fans, though not as tuckered out as fullback Jeff McAvick's kid brothers. Fans had players autograph anything, helmets, hats, even shoes. An Orange Bowl win and a national championship was a source of pride for all, including this Husker transplant who lives here. Like to, yeah, tomorrow, I was like dreading going to work. Because I have to face these people, because I have Husker stickers all over my truck, and I have to live here. But now, I'm just going to ride around and just laugh my ass off. All in all, it was a time to jam and slam. But at 4 a.m., hotel security said, enough is enough. Boy, that is for sure. And uh, not just down there in Miami, the folks here around town also getting awfully excited, as you may know, and uh, uh, to watch them cheer it on. But that enthusiasm didn't necessarily stay indoors, as Newswatch 7's Alex Fee shows us. When things went well for the Cornhuskers, they went very well. And many Nebraska Cornhusker victory parties, which started out in local bars, soon poured out into the streets. 72nd and Dodge is the anointed location where fans set off fireworks and walked in between cars giving passengers celebratory high fives. It is clear what these people are celebrating. I'm bored, finally did it! In lieu of goalposts, a sign on 72nd Street takes a congratulatory beating. Police and riot gear stand guard at local businesses. Others direct traffic and try to prevent people from getting hurt by the slow-moving traffic. There are some arrests. This guy may be getting ticketed for worse party outfit. Others choose a less complicated attire, one saved for a special occasion. And for Nebraska Cornhusker football fans, this is a very special occasion. Reporting for Newswatch 7, I'm Alex Fees. And I guarantee you they did not feel the cold. They were numb for three reasons. The game, the cold, and probably something else. Yes, <laughs> feeling no pain. That's for sure. There is uh, just one more thing to do to make this special celebration complete. Welcome the Huskers back here to Lincoln. Back in a minute with the Huskers' triumphant return to the heartland. Welcome to the garden, the garden cafe, great food every day.
garden, a garden cafe. We love food. Welcome back to our live Husker celebration, everybody. Husker fans could not wait to be a part of this championship day. They stood in the cold just for a chance to applaud the Cornhuskers. And was it worth the wait? As Newswatch 7's Mary Nemmer shows us, it was a party worthy of national champions. Lincoln Airport, 2.46 p.m. From Sun Country back to Cornhusker Country. On the ground, but still flying high. The sight of their coach, their team, sent waiting fans into a frenzy. Husker power! Husker power! I'm tired. <laughs> I haven't had anything to, I haven't probably hadn't slept more than about an hour since last night. All year, we brought it home like we said we would. Yeah, put it into words. A darkened Devaney held a spectacle that would leave them nearly speechless once again. Ladies and gentlemen, the fourth straight Big 8 champions and your national champion! I'd like to uh, thank you very much. I know you've been here a long time and it's uh, certainly taken a lot of patience on your part. Uh, about 22 years of it, I guess. But, uh, I think it's pretty obvious you guys are the best fans in the nation. Doesn't get any better than this. You might call all this a meeting of the Mutual Admiration Society. It's a dream come true for me. I've never, you know, dreamt it'd be this incredible, and I've wanted to do this my whole life, so I'm as happy as I can be. The thousands of fans who packed the Devaney Center may actually have more of a grasp of this victory than the team. You heard a number of the players say it just hasn't sunk in yet. It may take a few hours of much-needed sleep before they wake up and realize exactly what they've accomplished. In Lincoln, for Newswatch 7, I'm Mary Nemmers. What a whirlwind it has been the last, uh, well, week or so for us. We were down there in Miami with them, and then, of course, all the fans celebrating here. It's been amazing. The best, the best. But that's all the time we have for this year's Husker celebration. Hopefully, though, we'll see you here next year. But we can't leave without one more look at the national championship. Nebraska Corn Huskers, past and present, our incomparable sports photographer, Bob Horder, put this together for you. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you have your VCRs rolling. Have a great night, everybody, and maybe...